All right. Uh, hey, Vanguardians. This is Jordan. Um, I'm doing this video right now because I'm still. I saw um, Niall and Jonathan doing videos, and they're expressing their opinions, and people were asking them how they felt about a different number of things concerning Vanguard. Um, I kind of got a little inspired by what they were talking about, and I've been seeing on the group just people asking questions and people over-expressing, you know, their opinions on hype for the new set, and, you know, just the overall game in general and how it's progressed. So, um, I haven't has asked any, and no one's asked me any questions yet, um, that's okay, I'm, it's the middle of the night, it's 1.22 in the morning. I've, I just got off work, and today's been crazy, um, because I live in Seattle, well, Everett, um, same, pretty much the same city as Nile, um, and we go to each other's locals, so we know each other personally, um, I haven't been there in a while, because I work weekends, so it's really hard for me to, to go over there, um, nowadays, because... My job doesn't allow me to do it, but schedule's changing, so I'm able to play Vanguard more competitively than I used to in the last couple of months. So I'm pretty excited for that. But back to the issue on hand. Um, so right now in Vanguard, my opinion on the meta is it's very expansive. It's very, there's a lot of variety to it, and I think that's what's best for the game right now, because with a lot of different decks that are strong and have options, there's more people, or there's less people net decking and less people playing the same deck and more, less mirrors and, you know, plenty of people playing locals and the ARG circuit, or even, you know, Bushy Road Sanctions tournaments. Um, like in the video that uh, Niall posted earlier, uh, he talked about um, the current decks that are in the meta, that will be in the meta as of this Friday. Um, personally, I'm playing Blaster Joker, which a lot of people have expressed their opinions on the fact that this card is overhyped. Um, I just want to say that it may be a little, little overhyped, but it's not the most expensive card in the set. And it has its, its yeah, it's not very cost efficient and everything, but with the proper build and a personal build, I think the card has potential. That's just my opinion. But with um, for the other decks, um, Dragonic Overlord the Great is has here in in Washington and pretty much whenever I've gone to a Bushy Road tournament, I have seen a lot of Kagero and a lot of Narukami. Like those are like the two decks that if they have new support and it's really good support. That's pretty much the meta. That's that's what majority of what people are going to be playing that tops is going to be. That's going to top. I've seen it the last couple of years. I've seen it last year at Worlds. I've seen it the year before. And ironically, the year before that, it's been either Kagero or Narukami that's like the most played deck. So, um, back to the Great um, and Dragnute. A lot of people are like looking for um, Dragonite over the Great more than Dragnoot, but both those cards together, Dragnoot's really good. Like in my personal opinion, it's far superior to in this game than the Great because it's a lot more control than the Great. The Great is just a restanding, which pretty much that's what any form of the Overlord does. Is it's a restanding vanguard. Um, Dragnute has 
you know, it self damages. Yeah, it's it's very cost heavy, but it retires three units and damages your opponent. Um, I think that can be a really good game changer. And then you could possibly ride into the great next turn and finish off your opponent when they are, you know, low on, you know, card advantage and field advantage. Um, CEO, your Dressel, I played that deck for maybe about a week or two because I decided to build it because I built a few extra boosters and I pulled the majority of the deck. I liked it. But it wasn't me. Uh, I mean, the the deck's good, but to me, it, it just didn't fit my playstyle. So I kind of, I trashed it. I, I traded off some of it to Robbie for this brand new playmat, which, by the way, is amazing. If you want a playmat that's, like, really good, it's, like, really thick, too. So I'm very impressed. And it's only, it was only 35 in trade. So, I mean, this thing is awesome. I, I love it. It's great, and it's Dragon Ball Z. Like you can't get, you can't go bad with Dragon Ball Z. But um, I basically trashed the deck. Um, I like I said, I traded most of it to Robbie, and then I took the rest of my pretty much everything that I had, and I sold it to my locals for store credit, and I'm now using that along with some cash to buy. My boxes for set 17 this coming week because I'm going to a huge locals tournament in my lo uh, my locals here um, over in Tacoma, um, Tacoma, Washington. It's Northwest Sports Cards. If nobody's heard of it or they you know want to look up their website, they do have a website. Um, that's where I started playing Vanguard. That is my that's my home store. Um, it's also the home store of a few very top players here in Washington. It is, if you ever heard of the name Hector Gomez or Shane McKinnon, they are both top players here. They've both topped in several tournaments. Um, Hector was the Washington State representative for the um, the other event besides Team Fight two years ago. Um, but he, he basically won all of, all of the tournaments in Washington and went to Florida to compete in the in the nationals there. Uh, Shane has gone, has topped and went to the top eight in California for uh, Worlds 2013. And I was there also. We also, partic uh, me and... Um, a few of my friends also participated in the team fight in 2013 during the Worlds, and we got into top eight, but unfortunately we scrubbed out. <laughs> it happens, especially since I didn't have a complete deck. I was playing a really, really put together a uh, Sweet Command Eradicator uh, deck that I somehow managed to, you know, win a few matches with, but I got, I pretty much got carried by my friends who were playing, so, but, um, going back to that team fight in 2013, um, my friend Hector Gomez and his, another friend of his, ours, and his younger brother, Alex, they won the team tournament and got, and pretty much won that entire team tournament. They got first place, they got the trophies, and I know it was, like, two years ago, but congratulations to them. They, they're really good players. Um, as far as I know, Hector still plays. Uh, Shane moved to California. So, just a huge shout out to those two guys. Um, they really brought me into this game and they've been really nice. And they're still really good players. Um, they're the ones that brought me into this game. So, really appreciate it. And it's a, it, this game's wonderful. I love the player base. I used to play, you know, some minor magic back in the day, a couple, like maybe a couple years ago. And I did play some Yu Gi Oh! Like most people on Yu-Gi-Oh, it's, unless you're in the right area, the competitiveness can be really crappy, like the atmosphere, and not to mention that every time someone goes to, you know, a world qualifier, there's like six or seven deck thefts. It's kind of sad. 
Anyway, the topic on hand is the meta decks. I've already talked about Eudrasil. I've talked about the Great in Dragnoot. I've talked about Link Joker, um, Blaster Joker. Um, Dark Zodiac is another choice. It's actually the cheaper build and probably the more consistent build in terms of control. Um, I thought about playing Dark Zodiac, but I honestly like Blaster Joker just because it's got a lot of unique um, support in Marion, in Dilaton, you know, and then using Bolt Line. It can be a good deck. And then my personal build, I'm going to be running, I know everybody's going to freak out about this, but I'm running 8 stands and Lathan, uh, Lathanium and ne uh, Neobium, the, the units that get plus 2,000 if a unit is locked in there on the field just because I want that uniqueness of having giant rows if I use Blaster Jokers and or Garnet Stars effects, you know, just to give them that extra boost and then using stands, you know, to add that extra pressure. It's kind of, people might think it's a bad deck, but, you know, that's people's opinions. You know, people try to make me change it. I'm sticking with it until it does me wrong. I'm gonna stick with it. Otherwise, you know, I'll probably if it does work out for me, I'll probably switch to Zodiac and Blaster Joker, or Zodiac Garnet. But um, another meta deck that I believe is really good would probably be um, Brawlers. It's very cheap, but Brawlers, uh, a straight Big Bang deck, did no shotgun, no anything. Because you got to be able to cross drive because it's the only cross slide they're using right now. Because that's pretty good for a deck that's completely offensive. Having that cross ride, you know, 13 base um, gives you a defensive edge. And not to mention that the deck pretty much blows up your opponent's field consistently, like at least three times in a row. And it can really wreck. Your opponent's face, especially if you have the field set up for the big ass numbers on your rear guards. When you use the effect, it can be you can you can pretty much end your opponent's you can end your opponent within two turns if you do it right. So I, brawlers is a good choice, especially if you want a cheap deck because unlike other decks, it's probably the cheapest to build, and it's like. 100, 120 tops for a full deck. Um, another good deck is Thing Saver. Thing Saver Alfred, Thing Saver Wingle, Bri Wingle Liber uh, Wing Seeker Wingle, whatever the fuck it's called. Um, that's a good deck, Restanding Vanguard. Um, it has consistently see issues in the fact that. Um, you will run out of mates, so you can't constantly restand. Um, Thing Abyss, um, unfortunately, even though it's a good deck, is not going to last in the meta very long. When um, the generation, the first generation set hits, so it's a good deck. It was good in Japan, but it's just not going to last here, and it's the unfortunate thing. I personally don't like the deck. Um, Abyss is another good deck. Um, it's very dangerous, especially with Mordred. We've known that ever since it hit with the extra booster, that deck dominated in several. You know, it's it dominated in the pre um, the finals in both uh, nationals and I'm pretty sure it was used in regionals um, and worlds. And then the ARG circuits, I know they were used to, along with Yggdrasil. I've been keeping kind of tabs on the ARG circuit. Um, I heard rumors from my friend that there's a possibility of an ARG circuit tournament coming here to Washington. I believe that was trying to be set up. I'm not entirely sure. I haven't had a chance to bring up the subject with Robbie, but from what I've heard, they're kind of making their way this way towards West. That'd be great because if if we have an ARG circuit tournament, the player base up here in Washington, I'm hoping will increase because it's actually growing 
less. From when we first started, within the span of maybe a year, our player base has just dropped. And maybe because, you know, players have lost interest, or, you know, they've grown out of card games, that happens. But it's, it's, it's pretty low. And maybe it's because, you know, they don't like the changes in the game, the meta is too drastic and one-sided. If they think that, well, things are changing again with G-Assist and Stride and Legion and, you know, Legion Break Right decks and Break Right and Limit Break Enablers. It's giving more diverse abil uh, stuff to decks so you can play more versatile decks in different clans. So it's not just one or two decks that are straight up meta anymore. It's more like there's like 10 decks that are meta. And that's what I like about the game. I, now that it's expanded so much, there's more versatility. You can finally choose a clan that you like and play it and not have to worry about, you know, one or two decks that are just going to run you over because you have the possibility of running them over and winning. And that's just the way it is now. It's great. Um, let's see. Another meta deck that I believe is really good. What is it? No, it's coming out in the new set. Um, I just had it in my head too. Oh my god. Let's see, I've talked about Thing Abyss, Thing Saver, Abyss, um, Brawlers, Link Joker, um, CEO, honestly, I have forgot, whatever. Uh, if, if I've forgotten a certain meta deck that, you know, anybody else has mentioned, like I'm sure Jonathan's going to mention it in his video tomorrow when he posts it. Because I know he's doing one. Um, Niall mentioned a few meta decks too on his opinions on them, which I completely agree with. I I, I agreed with like 99% of his video what he talked about. It I completely agree on. Personally, because that's that's the truth of the game. There's just no in the meta. There's just no absolute deck anymore that'll top. It's, you can choose a variety of decks. There's a lot of strong decks, a lot of strong clans right now. Um, overall, it's just, there's a lot of variety that you can choose from now than there was before. <sighs> now, going on to, let's see, another issue I've seen on the group that I have my opinion on, and that is just a little too much um, badgering, you know, um, heckling, just getting a little out of hand. Um, I'm sure most of the admins know about it already, and they're trying to work with it, and they're, they've dished out warnings to people. I'm not going to name names. You know, I have, and I'm sure personal people, if my name pops up, they're like, oh my god, it's this guy. Or, you know, why don't this guy shut up, or whatever, you know. But that's fine. People have their opinions. People are going to get mad. That's the internet. And sadly, you can't have an opinion without having someone have a backlash opinion. So, that's, that's the life of debate. It, it's not an argument so much as a debate. And when it becomes an argument is when people get angry, you know, they start cussing, they don't open their mind, they're open your views to the other person's opinion and understand why they're saying that. They just get mad for no reason. And it's unfortunate. Um, just the way it is. So. If um, anyone has any opinions, concerns, you know, questions, feel free to ask. I'll probably do a follow-up video if enough people ask me questions. That'd be great. 
um, right now. I'm just doing this short video to get you know share my personal opinions on on the group and the card game and the current meta and there can be improvements in terms of the game itself it's great I'm enjoying it you know um, unfortunately I have a, you know I have a family of my own and I even though I live by myself I live away from my family because I'm up here in Everett working my ass off to provide for my family I'm just doing some stuff on the, on the side hobbies I pretty much turned Vanguard into a hobby and not you know a way of life like I used to playing the game every weekend locals you know spending money trading having you know a binder full of trades I don't have that anymore I just had a few trades one deck play mat some dice and I'll go occasionally to have some fun two five dollars a week on a weekend to have some fun with some nerdy friends that I known for years or you know for a few weeks yeah sounds like a great time now another thing I want to bring up um, I, I mentioned this before is trying to increase the amount of player base up here in Washington I know we have like five locals expanded around that um, officially um, sanctioned tournaments here in Washington so there's like one just a little bit north of me in Marysville there is another one a little south from me in Shoreline I believe that's uh, Niles locals can't remember the name for the love of God of me um, there's my locals down in Tacoma that I uh, vi visit as much as I can and that's Northwest there is um, Shane's uh, Shane's down in Renton um, Gabby's um, Olympic card games um, that's in Olympia and as far as I know there's like two more but I can't think of the names off the top of my head but that's it those are the only locals and their player bases are very can vary. I know Shane's in Renton has quite a big player base, um, but as for like Northwest and um, Niles locals, most maybe 12 to 16 players at a tournament, maybe even eight. Um, just to be able to increase that player base, expand. Um, I would really like that up here because then we can probably have more players, you know, more friendly players, more people that want to get into the game, you know, and play competitively. That would be great. So, um, I ask of Robbie Cole if he knows anything about the ARG circuit coming here to Washington, like my, that my friend has mentioned. Any information on that, if you can message that to me. So I have an idea of what's happening. If it's a possibility, that'd be great. So I can possibly start spreading the news or, you know, whatever. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but if, if there's any information, that'd be great if you could share that with me. Now, let's see. I don't know. I think that's it. Hmm. Maybe I should uh, give my opinion on, on the deck I'm building right now. If anybody wants to know about that. Um, I am building, like I said before, I'm building Blaster Joker, Garnet Star, Link Joker. Um, when I finish the build this weekend, I will have, it'll be, so for my grade 3s, I'll have um, 4 Garnet Star and 3 Blaster Joker is my grade 3 lineup. My grade 2s are going to be um, 4 Photon, 2 Dilaton, um, the other card. Oh. I don't have them in here. Let's see. It was 2 Dilaton, 4 Photon, um, 4 uh, Neobium, and 
think that was it. Oh, and I think two radon. Two or three radon. Can't remember, yeah. Uh, for my grade ones, I will be playing three bolt line, two Marion, four perfect guards, and four uh, lithanium. Lanthanum. Um, grade zero lineup for triggers. I'm playing eight stand, four draw, four heal, and my starter will be Brave Fang. Oh wait, no. I think I, I think I messed up on my grade ones. Um, four lithanium, four perfect guards, three bolt line, and two Marion. So if if I repeated myself, I'm sorry. I was just making sure that I got that right. But um. Grade zeros, triggers, eight stands, four draw, four heal, and my starter will be Brave Fang. I'm thinking about taking a second Brave Fang. I'm not entirely sure, but um, let's see how the deck goes this weekend with the tournament. So if you guys have opinions on the deck, I know I brought it up once before in a post. Um, I kind of modified the deck a little bit based on everyone's opinions. I kind of tweaked it into my deck, but. As of right now, the deck's final. I'm not going to tweak it anymore until I've played it. Um, but if you guys have your opinions on it, whether or not it's should uh, I should make some minor improvements, I'll consider it. Um, if you guys have questions for me, um, I'm trying to make my presence a little bit better here on the on the group because I feel like there's a lot of nice people on here um Jonathan has been really nice um Jonathan SP Min Minham he's been really nice um he's a good admin Robbie Cole's really nice I've only talked to him a few times and I've traded with him once um he's a really nice guy um Neil I know personally um all three of them are really good admins they're really nice people so if you don't already I Please respect them, because, I mean, I know Neil can be opinionated, but that's just the way he is. I'm just going to be that that guy that will occasionally post a video or, or a post and talk about some stuff. You know, maybe try to quell some of the anger or the rage or the, the arguments that are happening you know, before an admin has to step in, because if an admin steps in, you know, it's going to turn ugly. Or it, it won't turn ugly, but, you know, it'll be bad for the people that are arguing. You know, they might get talked to. So, just trying to be, you know, a friendly, you know, mediator that's equal with everyone else. Because, yeah. Oh, but what about them Hawks, though? You know, I haven't talked about the Seahawks game today. I know uh, this is going to be irritating Jonathan for me to comment on my uh, my wall earlier when I posted a picture of me in my Marshawn Lynch jersey. Um, I'm pretty excited for the Super Bowl. I'm a huge football fan. I represent Seattle because that's what I'm from. That's where I live. I've been a Hawks fan since I was a very small teenager. I'm, you know, 12 when I started wa really watching football and got into sports. Um, we won today. Really great game. I know it's off topic, but um, the game started off really bad for us. I mean, really bad. It was 16-0 um, Green Bay at, at the half. And uh, when I got to work today, before I clocked on, um, I was keeping tabs on the game. And at the end of the third quarter, um, we had managed to get our first touchdown by faking a field goal and that kind of made that just kind of made it you know snowball for our team because then in the fourth quarter I don't know what happened because I didn't get to watch it but I watched highlights and a lot of insane crazy shit that normally doesn't happen in football happened and I, I swear to God, MVP was Marshawn Lynch because he did so much, you know, backing up for Wilson because Wilson was just choking. He he threw so much interceptions during the game four intercept 
four or five interceptions out of the total seven for both teams. It's just ridiculous. But um, you managed to get another touchdown, and then our second touchdown was our very own personal Marshawn Lynch beast mode performed another beast quake, and and then after that we got a two point conversion, and that was after we did an onside kick. So we were 14. It was 14 to 19. We did an onside kick and recovered, and then we scored again and got a two-point conversion. Green Bay got the ball and managed to get a field goal um, to tie it up. And we went into overtime, and not even two to three minutes into overtime, we scored and won. And I swear to God, I, I, I'm proud. I was at work, but I'm pretty sure like Seattle blew up in an, in an uproar. At the comeback, and after, of course, after the game, the Colts and Patriots. I kept my tabs on that one. Um, congratulations to the Patriots, you know, for completely, you know, smothering the fuck out of Col out of the Colts. But it was a good game. Unfortunately, it was kind of a blowout, and the pa the Patriots just kind of ran the Colts over. There was no chance. So, two weeks. Seahawks and Patriots at the Super Bowl. Uh, good luck to both teams, but um, I honestly hey think. Guys. <clears throat> what the hell? Hey guys. <clears throat> Anyway, well, that was weird. My computer decided to be stupid. Um, so, anyway, best luck to both teams. Um, Jonathan, sorry, dude. We're on opposites right now. You're a Patriots fan. I'm a Hawks fan. Good luck to your team, but uh, I think it's my team here. Again. Last year, we blew everything out of the water. We went. We uh, blow out against Denver. This year, I'm hoping will be a better game than last year, so it's not a fucking blowout again. Like I want, I want the game to be close. I want the game to be intense, but I'm rooting for the Hawks and I want them to win because they deserve it more than any team right now. They deserve it because we've struggled and we finally have a good team. We finally have the passion. And we finally have the fans, and we need this. Two years in a row, we need this. We just need it. Next year, if we if we go and we lose, that's fine. But this year, we need it. I'm sorry. It's going to happen. Not bad. Yeah. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Um, it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. I've got work at, you know, in the afternoon tomorrow, so I should probably get some sleep. Um, but after I post this video, which will be the moment I stop recording, um, ask questions. Go ahead and ask them. Um, post them on, you know, on the comments or message me personally. Um, whatever you feel like you want to do. Um, and thanks for watching. Have a good night.